Welcome, aviation enthusiasts, to a journey through history. Today, we're soaring high with the iconic Boeing C-137 Stratoliner, a legendary aircraft that served not only as a VIP transport, but also as a symbol of power and innovation. But what happened to these magnificent machines after their service ended? 18 of these aircraft were ordered, but only 15 were built. Out of that total, only 7 remain preserved. One aircraft's status is unknown, while the rest have been withdrawn from service and broken up for recycling. Join us as we explore the fascinating locations and stories of every surviving C-137 around the world. Perhaps the most famous C-137 are those that are referred to as Air Force One, the call sign of the aircraft carrying the President of the United States. These aircraft were procured by the United States Air Force to bring the transportation services of the United States President up to the standards other world leaders were beginning to enjoy with the advent of the jet-powered airliner age. Five C-137s, each designated as a Special Air Mission Aircraft, or otherwise known as SAM, were known as SAM-970, SAM-971, SAM-972, SAM-26000, and SAM-27000. These aircraft served in the prestigious role from 1959 to 2001. Four of these five aircraft are preserved today. Let's visit their final resting places. The Museum of Flight is located in the southern half of the King County Airport, also known as Boeing Field. The SAM 970 aircraft was delivered to the United States Air Force in 1959 as a replacement for President Eisenhower's Lockheed Constellation. This was the first of six aircraft that were ordered for this role, however only three were completed. President Eisenhower was the first to take a trip on this aircraft, which he did on August 26, 1959. SAM 970 was also known to carry Presidents Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. Later on, it would be used by Secretary of State Henry Kissinger for his peace talks with North Vietnam, diplomacy with mainland China, and his shuttle diplomacy efforts in the Middle East in 1974. This aircraft remained in federal service until 1996. It is on loan to the Museum of Flight from the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. This next aircraft was designated SAM-27000 and was the second purpose-built Air Force One from Boeing, based on the Boeing 707-353B model. This aircraft served seven presidents, starting with President Nixon and ending with the second President Bush. This aircraft is displayed above the floor in the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library Museum, along with several other artifacts from his presidency. After President Carter's presidency, he was sent on this aircraft to Germany to greet the returning former hostages held by Iran in the late 1970s and the early 1980s. This aircraft is on loan from the United States Air Force. At the National Museum of the United States Air Force, we will find the aircraft that was designated as SAM-26000, which was the first of the purpose-built Air Force One aircraft, like SAM-27000. This was the primary aircraft for Presidents Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon before being relegated to being a secondary aircraft on the arrival of SAM-27000. It was this aircraft that first received the now familiar livery that all Air Force One aircraft are now painted in. This was also the aircraft that, sadly, President Kennedy flew to his fateful trip to Dallas, Texas in 1963 and returned his body to Washington, D.C. to be laid at rest in Arlington National Cemetery. Sam 26000's last presidential mission was to fly President Clinton from an event in Illinois when Sam 27000 was grounded. This aircraft now resides inside the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, since its last flight in 1998. As you may have seen from my previous videos, covering the locations of now-preserved Boeing 707-derived aircraft, the Pima Air and Space Museum has two members of the C-135 family of aircraft, along with the VC-137 SAM 971. This aircraft was delivered to the United States Air Force as a modified Boeing 707-120. This aircraft, like SAM 970, was initially painted with orange markings before receiving the now current Air Force One livery. This aircraft was retired from Air Force One service when SAM 26000 was delivered in 1962 
and its new livery reflected this change in status. This was also the aircraft that flew the freed Iran hostages to the United States after they were treated for any injuries in Germany. This aircraft was retired from Air Force service in 1999 and put on display at the Pima Museum shortly thereafter in its Air Force II livery. Sadly, SAM 972 is not on this list as this aircraft was scrapped for recycling in 1996 as this aircraft was found with severe corrosion issues. While the VC-137s captured the public eye, several other C-137 variants served diverse roles. Across the desert home of Davis Monthan Air Force Base from the Pima Air and Space Museum is the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, or AMARG for short. This is home to an EC-137D or E, depending on the source material. This aircraft started out life as a normal commercial Boeing 707-355C. The aircraft would see many owners in many nations between 1967 and 1992 when it began its U.S. Air Force career. It flew with such airlines as Airlift International, Air Bahama, Caledonian Airways, which became British Caledonian, then on to Britannia Airways, finally flying with St. Lucia Air. After all this, it returned to the United States to fly government contracted flights, much in the same way as EG&G aircraft flying in and out of Las Vegas to surrounding Air Force bases today. In 1992, this aircraft was purchased by the United States Air Force and converted into an EC-137. What and where this aircraft was used is unknown at this time. The aircraft was retired to the davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona to be preserved and cared for by the 309th AMARG. What is being preserved for is unknown, and the aircraft cannot be visited by the general public. The C-137's reach extends beyond U.S. borders. The nation of Spain is listing as having preserved two of this aircraft type. One of these aircraft is eventually slated to be put on display at the Museo de Aeronautica y Astronautica, southwest of downtown Madrid. This aircraft started its flying career as a normal airliner for Northwest Airlines in 1966 as a Boeing 707-351C. By 1973, the aircraft had received a cargo freighter conversion and served with the Greek airliner Olympic as a cargo freighter. Then, in 1989, the aircraft began serving the cargo market in Africa with EAS Airlines. Sometime after that, the aircraft received another conversion, this time to being a KC-137 with drogue refueler assemblies on both wings. This aircraft served for this purpose until 1996 when it was withdrawn from service. The aircraft was then donated to the Museo de Aeronautica y Astronautica sitting outside of the Cuatro Vientos Air Base in southwestern Madrid. The latest pictures we have of this aircraft show it off the museum grounds and without its rudder assembly. Current pictures show that this aircraft is sitting at the Spanish Air Force Base Getafe along with the next aircraft on our list. As mentioned before, this next Spanish Air Force VC-137E started out life as a normal commercial Boeing 707-368C. The aircraft was initially purchased by Saudi Airlines for service in and around the Middle Eastern nation of Saudi Arabia. After a decade of service in the Middle East, the aircraft wound up being converted into a VC-137 for the Spanish Air Force. This aircraft would serve in that role until 2016 when it became the last Boeing 707 in Spanish Air Force service. Like the aircraft we mentioned before, this aircraft is currently sitting at the Spanish Air Force Base Getafe in southern Madrid, awaiting full preservation and display. Some sources say that this aircraft has been donated to the King Juan Carlos University of Madrid but this is yet unconfirmed. For those of you who are wondering, there is one more C-137 out there. However, its status is unknown at this time, as my usual sources say it's active, but I cannot find anything to really prove that. This aircraft started life with Olympic Airways as a 707-384C in 1968. It was converted into a KC-137 for the Venezuelan Air Force by the Israeli Aerospace Industries Company around 1990. It has served that nation since then, but as stated earlier, whether or not it's truly active is unknown.
From presidential missions to global deployments, the Boeing C-137 holds a unique place in aviation history. Each preserved aircraft tells a story of innovation, service, and human ambition. As we continue to learn from these remarkable machines, they inspire us to soar even higher towards the future. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. This is our fifth and final video of all the preserved intact and partially preserved aircraft that all came down from the Boeing Model 367-80. Our next preserved aircraft video will be coming out in two weeks. Thank you to everyone who watched each of these videos. You helped me gain momentum with this channel. Share your thoughts on the C-137's legacy in the comments below. Do you know of any other preserved C-137's that we might have missed? At the end of the video, you will find links to the following. A link to watch a video on the history of other preserved Boeing 707 based aircraft. Or you can watch any number of videos that cover a range of full-length Boeing 707 histories. You can subscribe to this channel to continue watching for more aviation content. If you want to support our channel financially, join our Patreon page, which will provide benefits for membership. Or you can provide money through the Super Thanks button below your viewing screen. Thank you so very much for watching our channel, and we hope to see you all again soon.